everybody. Thank you for joining us here today. I hope you can hear me all right. There's quite a few people in my house today. Um, so there's quite a lot of noise in the background. I do apologize for that. If you get any questions, then I'm very happy to take them at the end. And I will talk about the research that we've done on COVID-19 and anti-Semitic expression online. But also, I, I want to begin by talking about the slide that came up at the very beginning when we all joined this just now, which spoke about the Third Reich and described the Third Reich as old hatreds. And how did comparisons go between the old hatred of the Third Reich and the, the new hatred that is online. And I think there's a, there's a problem with that because the Third Reich stuff, it is now a bit old, but it only makes sense because it built upon millennia of racism and specifically of anti-Semitism. Jews were never more than 1% of the population of Germany. So where on earth does the power of anti-Semitism to the Nazi program come from? It would make no sense if this was just something that the Nazis had invented. And the, you know, Hitler saying that the Jews had stabbed Germany in the back, and that's why they lost World War I. That would make no sense unless it drew upon far older myths about Jews. Similarly, um, in the, the only speech really where, where Hitler spoke about the coming Holocaust, when he said, if the Jews cause another war, it will be them who suffer, you know, whilst he himself is obviously building up his army. I, I, again, that would make no sense if it did not rest upon underlying principles. So I think the, the first lesson here, and it's a lesson that emphasizes the extent of the struggle that we have with online hatred. The first lesson is how deeply, deeply ingrained these hatreds are. And we should not fool ourselves that just because the technology of transmission and of taking it in, just because that technology is new, it doesn't mean that what is being used is new. It's not new. It's very, very old. And we need to understand that because unfortunately the problem is even deeper than it appears to be on the surface. And specifically with anti-Semitism, you come immediately to the distinguishing feature between anti-Semitism and other forms of racism, which is essentially, if you hate Jews, you're, you're punching up, you're punching against the people who are above you in society. Whereas with other forms of racism, you're punching down, you're punching at people who are beneath you in society. And to understand where that comes from, we have to go back 2,000 years. And at the moment, it seems like society is perhaps dominated by technology, by the online world, by social media. Well, it's still nothing compared to the domination, the best part of 2,000 years of European society being dominated by religion, by Christianity, by this being the sole reference point for understanding for a lot of that time. Um, and in a world that is built upon religion and God's perfection, how do you explain things like the Black Death? Even more so, how do you explain the Messiah, the Son of God, Christ, being killed? How do you explain why somebody would not accept the Son of God? 
So how evil and perverse must these people be who do not accept the Son of God? And how unbelievably powerful must these people be if they are able to kill the Son of God? And how much evil must they continue to be if they keep rejecting the Son of God over the centuries that pass? So the, the importance here of how evil, fundamentally evil, in the deepest possible meaning of the word, Jews are, how powerful they are, literally in league with the devil, literally satanic levels of power, and that they conspire. And if you look physically at the condition of Jews at this time, they look downtrodden, they look poor, they look, they look like rubbish. But actually, the secret of the conspiracy is that they have so much power. So these, these deep ingrained themes of Jewish conspiracy, of Jewish power, of Jews literally against the rest of humanity and all that is authentic and all that is good and innocent and honest and truthful, it runs very, very deep. Um, if you then fast forward specifically to start talking about the things that the Nazis played upon you, you have the association of Jews on the one hand with communism and with revolution, and again with the overthrow of that which is authentic. You have the idea that Jews can never sufficiently assimilate to be part of the, the nation, the body politic. You have the allegation that um, Jews are responsible also for capitalism and for banking and have a unique association with money, which draws upon the professions that Jews were forced into during the Middle Ages. So on the one hand, Jews are communists. On the other hand, Jews are the arch capitalists. But both of those are the same side of the coin because the coin is the Jewish coin and, and the, the plot is for the Jews to dominate, usually not dominating with themselves at the front, but dominating through somebody else who provides the front for them. Um, now to, to look at what we're seeing online now specifically regarding coronavirus, COVID-19, call it what you want. I know there is a difference between the two, but I can never remember what it is. Um, if you have a hateful, conspiratorial understanding of the world, then whatever happens next, you will twist in order to fit your view of the world. Um, but also if the world becomes more complicated and if your personal circumstance becomes worse, you do need psychological explanations um, to help you deal with that. So that the power of conspiracies at a time like this, when we will see financial hardship and we will see socio-political dislocation in ways that I think um, nobody quite appreciates yet, the potential for conspiracy is very, very high. But anyway, this lands on top of conspiracy theories and you twist it to fit your pre-existing view of the world. Um, and this, we knew, we knew as soon as this began that Jews would be blamed for it in one way or another. Um, and we did a fairly large report on this that we brought out on the 8th of April, which already is quite a long time ago. And the things that, that we saw two months ago, we're still seeing, and we're seeing more and more of. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna talk about some of that. One specific conspiracy theory that we deal with here in Britain, forgive me, I don't know how prevalent it is across Europe, is that the 5G, the new communication network towers, are causing coronavirus. 
Now that only makes sense if you already had a conspiracy theory about 4G. Before that, you already had a conspiracy theory about 3G. So for example, we have online postings such as the one in our report, which someone says, good morning guys, quick update. There are no 5G towers in Jewish areas. I wonder why. So you can see how this, how this works. I mentioned earlier about the Black Death. Um, the Black Death killed around 20 million people. It killed around one third of the entire population of Western Europe. And in 14th century Europe, if you wanted an explanation for why things like this happened, blaming Jews was a fairly straightforward and obvious thing to do. And that's exactly what happened. Um, in many places throughout Western Europe, Jews were blamed for causing the plague. Jews were blamed for poisoning the water wells. Jews were tortured, put on trial, executed and expelled. Thousands of Jews were murdered for this and hundreds of communities were destroyed. So for example, you have an account from Strasbourg in 1349, which I will quote from, it literally says, in the matter of this plague, the Jews throughout the world were reviled and accused in all lands of having caused it through the poison which they are said to have put into the water and the wells. That is what they were accused of. And for this reason, the Jews were burnt all the way from the Mediterranean into Germany, but not in Avignon, for the Pope protected them there. As Jews always have the powerful protectors. The scale of persecution during the Black Death actually is one important reason historically for the Jewish demography of Eastern Europe, especially in Poland, which subsequently was uh, the, the main crucible for where the Holocaust occurred. And fast forwarding to the Third Reich, you had the, the repeated descriptions of Jews of being a, a harmful bacillus, as it was said in Mein Kampf, a Jewish virus that threatened Germany. And in Nazi propaganda, such as the infamous film Der Erwige Jude, you literally have Jews portrayed as rats or as lice and spreading their infection all across maps of Europe. So the, the immediate anti-Semitic legacy of Jews and plague and virus is very strong within a Third Reich propaganda context. Um, and you, you can draw some parallels between that and what you now see online. But um, I, I would say that a, a more accurate or perhaps a more relevant point of comparison would simply be to say that anti-Semitism sooner or later can be found in most conspiracy theories. And so when you have conspiracy theories about coronavirus, they will sooner or later talk about Jews. There were different types of categorization, if you like, for, for Jews and coronavirus that we saw. Uh, the first one, that the virus is fake, and it's a Jewish conspiracy. So for example, I'm not gonna quote all of it, and also because the language in it is very offensive, but um, coronavirus is a hoax by the vaccine kikes, i.e. The, the vaccine Jews, teamed with the banker kikes, the, the banker Jews. They want to pump you and your kids full of aluminium and mercury to turn you into a retard who's content doing a menial job for 50 years. As usual, the banker kikes want to crash the economy and tighten the money supply so that small independent businesses go out of business then large American British Israeli companies can move in and take the market. People will default on their mortgages and lose their homes to the banks. Large businesses will need to take loans from the banks. Governments will plead for loans from the banks. Such kikery that's been reoccurring for centuries. Now you don't, you don't get that kind of anti-Semitism without reference to what I was saying earlier 
about the, the role of Jews with money, with capitalism. Uh, another category that the virus is real, it is real, but it's still a Jewish conspiracy. Um, and in this regard, two different themes. One, for example, of social media posting, I would not be surprised that hashtag China Nazi and hashtag Zio Nazi deliberately released COVID-19, probably they already have the vaccine. Um, there are several variations on this theme. The, the, the vaccine uh, is already known to Jews or Israelis or Zionists. So they put out the disease and then they'll come and make loads of money out of the vaccine. Or that somehow or other Israel and the Jews are trying to use coronavirus to cause a world war between China and America. Because, well, this is what Jews do. If you know your Nazi anti-Semitism, you know that Jews caused World War I so that the white races would kill each other. Similarly, that's exactly what Hitler said prior to World War II and the Holocaust. And if you know your anti-Semitic history before then, you can go through each war and you can find examples of Jews being blamed for them. So for example, uh, the, the war in the Crimea or the Napoleonic War. I mean, these are all wars so that Jews will make money. Then another category that Jews are the main spreaders of the virus, that this is not the Wu flu, this is the Jew flu. So this takes information that's publicly available that shows that Jews have uh, suffered in large numbers from the coronavirus and says that Jews are essentially responsible therefore for this being out there, either deliberately or accidentally. Um, and we find a, a fascinating little example of this in the context of uh, far left anti-Semitism, which cannot hate Jews just for being Jews, but hates Zionists, because Zionists are bad Jews. So an unbelievable example of this that, that we find said, Netanyahu doesn't have it. Israel is faking cases. The Zionists are behind spreading COVID-19. The ones who are truly suffering are the Orthodox Jews. Israel wants to get rid of them anyway, as they give the illegal state many problems. And then if you acknowledge that Jews are dying of it, obviously if you're an anti-Semite, then you celebrate Jewish deaths. And this is the final category, um, where literally we see online celebrations of how many Jews are dying of COVID-19. And then across all of these categories, you have um, something that the far right is trying to popularize, the Holocaust. If you have the bug, Give a hug, spread the flu to every Jew, hashtag Holocaust, which is obviously a play on Holocaust. Um, now this is a very good example of when do anti-racists draw attention to something or when do we ignore it? We knew that there would be media interest in how much anti-Semitism and extremism is, around, is there around the coronavirus? And we did this research immediately because we wanted to understand the true figures and the true scale of it. Our decision was that whilst the material was there, it was not sufficiently prevalent and it was not spreading into enough mainstream spaces to justify our making a big deal about it publicly. We wanted this information to understand what was going on. We put the information on our website because we were being asked about it all the time by journalists. But we stressed to the journalists, especially those that we knew well from the Jewish papers, that actually, in all honesty, this is not a particularly big deal. And if you choose to make it a big deal, then you will be doing the work of the extremists for them. And there's always this balance to be had between acknowledging what is going on, how to best fight against it, and do you, do you cover up? I don't think we're covering up, I think we're being honest about the situation and taking a mature decision as to how we talk about it. I'm perfectly happy to talk about it in this 
anti-racist forum. But that would be difficult. That would be very different uh, to making sensationalist media about it that would give anti-Semites ideas and that would cause Jews to be scared, and also, by the way, would cause the general public to say, "Look at the Jews making it all about them." Now, I'll have to slowly ask you to close down to still have some time for uh, for questions. That's absolutely fine. I was going to start <laughs> talking about the difficulties around education and counter narrative, but uh, if if you allow me to maybe dodge that huge difficulty, then I'm happy to take it. So, any questions, please? Yeah, I mean, it's also it's also because we have really like five seven minutes more to ask also some questions so maybe the cool. questions can also kind of uh direct you for answering some of those uh those issues uh unless uh there is somebody raising the hand immediately now then maybe we can actually let you speaking for a few more minutes you don't want me to speak anymore <laughs> no so there's just one hand up so please take uh, two more minutes to close up and uh to, to touch the okay. issue of the education, of course, it's important. So the, the other, the other it, it's, always, it's always really, really, really easy to analyze what the problem is. Um, it's much, much harder to say what to do against it. I'm always struck, maybe I'm wrong, but it always feels to me that the racists just had more fun, you know? They're just more direct. Their messaging is just more powerful. And that the counter narrative generally is just pretty dull and uninteresting. And that the truth is really quite boring. And so, yeah, you do what you can, obviously, to make the message interesting and impactful. But, it, you know, when, when we put out a, a short, Counter narrative film based on everything that I've just said. I ended up just having to say in it, you know, don't be ridiculous, be a decent person. All over Britain, people are coming together to fight against this terrible virus. People are being courageous, there's a sense of community spirit, we're all in this together. And to start, dividing society and to start hatred at this time now more than ever is absolutely ridiculous and counterproductive and indecent it's not decent it's not the right way to behave so you end up using the situation to make an appeal uh, to somebody's better judgment but i don't know how to i don't know how to demonstrate to somebody if someone thinks that that a 5G tower creates coronavirus. I don't know how to argue against that. I love seeing Ronald Eisen's on this call. Ronald's been unwell. Ronald, I send you all my love. And I want to just say one example. When, when I was working with Ronald on an Inach project very early in the day for Inach, and we had somebody from Facebook, the French, the head of French Facebook, PR, I think it was, the public relations lady. And she honestly said to us in our Inach seminar, the best way to deal with Holocaust denial is to ask Holocaust survivors to go online and to tell the Holocaust deniers that they are wrong. <laughs> Ronald's giving the finger. That is what happened. Now, I don't... I don't think that, to be honest, is how counter narrative work ought to be done. I think that there's a very, very deep need for proper education. Um, and I mean proper education around the fundamentals of democracy and of what free speech actually means and of what proper academic inquiry actually means. And what really worries me about coronavirus is that it will cause people to look for extremist solutions. It will reduce people's confidence in mainstream politics, democracy, in basically the, the systems of authority that currently exist because the systems of authority that exist can't cope with coronavirus. They don't have the answers to coronavirus. 
Um, and I think you'll see people move to the extremes. And I know that we talk about left-wing extremism and right-wing extremism, but I think these categories, these badges, will become, not, will become less relevant. Because instead, I mean, where do you categorize stuff against telephone masks? Where do you categorize stuff that says vaccination programs are designed to cause people to be stupid in the service of the establishment? So these, these categorizations are, are becoming wrong. Uh, the new age stuff in Britain, at least, is more important, perhaps, in regard to coronavirus. We have to start understanding these movements.